This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. And I'm delighted to greet you in the matchless and powerful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. A few minutes late getting on today, but praise God for the beginning of another work week. Um, and we just give God praise, honor, and glory. How's everybody today? Happy Monday to everybody. Can you believe that we're coming rapidly to the end of another month? I believe today is, let me see, wow, today is March the 27th. Well, anyway, God is good. Um, January, February, March, we're almost at the end of the third month. And so I want to thank each and every one of you for your support and for your love. Let me give some notices and announcements quickly because as the hymnologist says, time is filled with swift transition. None on earth can move. Build your things on, build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hands. First of all, I want to thank the men of our church for a wonderful men's day. Um, Sunday was our annual men's day. Our preacher had a wonderful word, consistent faith in God. You need to go to our YouTube page, our Facebook page, and listen to that sermon. It was the Reverend Dr. Carl Washington, president of our Empire State Convention. He came, stayed with us all day long, and we had a wonderful, wonderful time in the Lord on Sunday. I want to thank Deacon um, William Long, who is the chairperson of our Deacon Board, um, and Trustee Henry Russell, who gave wonderful, wonderful leadership to all of our Men's Day efforts this year. They had so many things that they did, and all the funds that are raised for our Men's Day efforts go to charities and missions. I mean, they had a popcorn sale. They had karaoke night. They had a Super Bowl party. They had the Martin Luther King Day program. But it was just a wonderful time to see all of these things culminate on Sunday. So thank each and every one of you. Now we are rapidly approaching what is the most sacred time of our Christian calendar as we walk with our Lord, the final steps to Calvary. And so on this Sunday, this Sunday is Palm Sunday, um, which commences Holy Week. We will come with Christians all over the world and declare Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. I hope that you will come. We will have the distribution of palms on Palm Sunday. Um, and we will also have our Easter concert. Our Easter concert is titled um, an Easter musical presentation, the joy and power of the resurrection, the joy and power of the resurrection. We have dinner immediately after service. And at three o'clock, we will start our Easter concert to usher in this Easter season. This is the cornerstone of our faith, that God raised Jesus from the dead. But more importantly, you cannot have Easter without Good Friday, because he who knew no sin became sin for us and died the endominious death of the cross that you and I might have a right to the tree of life. That is the cornerstone of our faith. I am hoping that you'll be here on Palm Sunday. And then on Monday, Thursday, we have the reenactment of the Lord's Supper. Of not the Lord's Supper, but of the Passover meal, the meal that Jesus had with his disciples. The Bible says on the night that Jesus was betrayed and after the supper, we want to have that Seder service. I hope that you will come. You need to sign up for that service. And that will be on Thursday on Thursday, following Palm Sunday. And then on Good Friday, commencing at 12 o'clock, we will have the last sayings of Jesus from the cross. We have seven wonderful preachers that will come to proclaim God's word. And then on Sunday, we will come and declare that Christ the Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. This is the time not to watch virtually, but this is the time that if you can, to make your way to the house of God. The Bible says, forget not the assembling yourselves together and so much more as you see the day approaching. My friends, these are dark and dreary days that we find ourselves. And the only solution that can help us is the word of God. 
The grass withereth and the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. So I'm looking for you for Palm Sunday worship experience. Looking for you for our concert that will be at three o'clock. We'll have dinner immediately following the morning worship as we come in and usher in this season. And then we'll be into Holy Week. We only have two services, the Monday, Thursday service that will start at seven o'clock. And then we will come on Good Friday at 12 o'clock and declare the suffering of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Experience the agony that he went through for you and for me. I know we're going to do that. And then we're going to come on Sunday and we're going to declare that Christ the Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. You cannot have Good Friday. You cannot have Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, without Good Friday. I know you're going to do that for us. All right, let's go to the word today. I want to continue in John's gospel. Um, you know, we talked out of John's gospel, chapter nine, last week, and we ended with the man that Jesus had healed that was born blind. And Jesus says at the conclusion, for the Pharisees and Sadducees and those who could not embrace the fact that they too are spiritually blind, but God has the ability to open up our eyes. And so Jesus heard that they had thrown this man out of the synagogue whom he had healed, who was blind. He didn't realize who had healed him. And Jesus said to the man, do you believe in the son of man? I'm in John chapter nine. He said, who is he, sir? The man asked, tell me so that I may believe in him. Then the man said, Lord, no, Jesus said to the man, you have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. Jesus, the man said, Lord, I believe, and he worshiped him. When you know who Jesus is, you ought to give him the praise, the honor, and the glory. Jesus said, for judgment, I've come into this world so that the blind will see, and those who see will become blind. In other words, the blind, those who don't know Jesus, will come to know him. And those who believe that they see will not be able to experience the goodness of God. Some Pharisees who were with him heard him say this and asked, what are we blind to? Jesus said, if you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin. If you knew that you were blind and could not see, you'd be open to the word of God. But now that you claim you can see, you can't see. And so your doubt remains. Let's continue. In chapter 10, and we'll just do the first six verses. Jesus says, verily, verily, I tell you, Anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in in some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. In other words, what Jesus is saying is that you are his disciples. You know his voice. Another voice, he says, we will not hearken to. And so as the pastor preaches and teaches the word of God, as he gives, as he receives direction from the sheep, to the chief shepherd, you hear his voice. Another voice we will not hearken to. 
So it's so important that we embrace the word of God, the teachings of God, so that we can be in the will of God. It's important that we study God's word. And even in studying God's word, the Holy Spirit will speak to you and give you guidance. And my prayer is that in this Lenten season, that we will seek to hear the voice of the Good Shepherd, Jesus the Christ, who lays down his life for his friends. He says, greater love have no man than this, but that a man lay down his life for his friends. We've studied today, John's Gospel, chapter 10, verses 1 through 6. We'll continue tomorrow. The word of God for the people of God, thanks be to God. Well, thank you, Mary Harding, uh, for reminding us, I forgot to announce, which is so very important, that on this Saturday, on this Saturday, we will have our fish fry, our pre-Palm Sunday fish fry. The missionaries under the leadership of our Angie Brooks Circle will be selling fish. They'll have porgies and whiting. Um, so you want to come and support this effort. Again, their funds that are raised go to support our missions efforts. Also, um, we will have the stripping of the palms on Palm Sunday. And of course, the choir will be here rehearsing as we get ready for Palm Sunday. We also will have a cake and bun sale. One of our wonderful members who is a member of our floor club, um, Sister, um, Sister Willie, um, will be um, sponsoring that and helping to make that happen so you can get your bun and cheese, your Easter buns as we get ready for Easter. I don't know about you, but I love the Lord. He heard my plea and pitied every groan. When trouble comes, I hasten and you hasten to his throne. Well, the word of God for the people of God, thanks be to God. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear God, for this time together, we give you thanks. And for another week, we thank you. Thank you for watching all over us last night while we slumbered and slept. Thank you for waking us up this morning and starting us on our way. Thank you for your grace and for your mercy. And now, God, as we enter into these holy days, we need your guidance. We need your direction. We need your peace. And we need your love. We pray, oh God, for each person in the sound of my voice. For those that are sick and shut in, oh God, we pray that you'll be a doctor that never lost a case. For those that are confused, we pray that you'd be our peace. For those of us who are blind and cannot see, we ask that you would open our eyes. Oh God, we love you and we thank you and we praise you. We thank you for life. We pray, oh God, for our friends and Mississippi and Alabama as they've been devastated with this earthquake that you, oh God, would make the crooked places straight and the rough places plain and that you would provide for them in this time of their need. We hear the Apostle Paul who reminds us who has known the mind of God and who has been his counselor. And so we bow, oh God, to your sovereign will. For those, oh God, that are bereft of spirit, that they have lost, lost loved ones, we pray that you would be a counselor and a comforter. We pray now, oh God, that you would help us to allow you to be our GPS system. For we hear Jesus when he declares that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes by the, to the Father but by me. And so hear our prayer now. Incline your ear to us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, God bless you. Um, let me just go ahead and greet you. I see you, Gloria James. We're praying for you. Thank you, Maxine, for your encouragement always. Um, thank you. Thank you, Marva Harding, for being on. Sister Cora Powell, thank you so much. Sister Virginia Chainer, thank you, Angela Reddix. Reddix, thank you. Sister Shirley Millard, thank you. Sister Una Reed, Sister Ruby Ramsey. Wanda, how are you? Bun and cheese, we're going to have that, yes. Um, thank each and every one of you so much. Thank you so much. God bless each and every one of you. Let somebody know that we're going to try to get through this week. Oh, tomorrow, I should say that up front, tomorrow um, I have a meeting in the morning. Um, we will not have Bible, we will not have noonday prayer tomorrow. Um, I'll be out of pocket tomorrow. 
but we'll be here Wednesday and preferably the rest of the week. All right, God bless you. Know that God loves you, and so do I. Let's receive the benediction. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance. May he grant you his peace and his love. And you're going in and then you're going out. And you're down sitting and you're uprising. So we shall stand in his presence through Jesus the Christ, to whom be glory, majesty, dominion, power, both now and forever. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful week.